Hey guys, Jim here once again from Quail Hollow Bird Farm. I want to do just a short video for you today. We've got some eggs in the incubator here. We have our uh, GQF 1502 Sportsman Incubator. This is what we use here on the farm. I only have this one fired up right now. Uh, we're doing a lot of cleaning and things like that, so um, I'm just using this one incubator right now because what we have is, is I've got a lot of birds out in the pen that are laying eggs right now. So to keep up our stock uh, through the summer, what I like to do is collect them eggs and put them in the incubator and hatch them out throughout the year. Uh, you know, your own eggs sometimes are going to be the better quality eggs because they're not getting mishandled, mistreated in, in shipping. So what I've done is I've, I've got about 50 eggs in here right now that are getting ready to come out. And I just wanted to show you a little bit about what's going on. These are the Tibetan and the Conternix quail eggs. So we'll be having a little bit of each hatch out. They've been in here about 15 days. They're going to hatch in about two days. And now it's time to go ahead and put them in our tray, our hatching tray, so that you'll get a good hatching process. What I want to do is I want to show you, we've got two different trays here. This is one that I've made up. And what I'm going to do is this particular tray is just made out of some 1x3s with a plastic... Uh, um, border around the edge and it's got a screen bottom. I mean, the reason this is because sometimes uh, when you put your eggs on here we just put them on this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this up with a material because you don't want the, the small chicks to get their feet in here uh, and to, to break toes and break uh, legs and things like that. So I'm going to cover this up and put it in here. And the reason I made these up is because we also use the plastic ones right here that come with the GQF incubator um, but I can make them up a whole lot cheaper than you can buy these things and I would like to use just a little bit shorter one in the bottom here uh, and then that way there what I can do is if I have a really big hatch and what we do then is we'll put the big tray in the bottom and we'll level our turners and we have these built so we can put three more hatchers and we just, instead of buying a separate hatcher, we can use this incubator for the same purpose. Now, like I've said in the past, I really like this type of an incubator. Now, a lot of you guys out there are using the styrofoam ones. There's nothing wrong with that. They work great for hatching small quantities of quail. However, here at the farm, we hatch about a thousand eggs to a time in our incubators and we have five of these incubators so we hatch out a large number and this is the best way to control humidity and temperature throughout your hatching process I don't care what anybody says you know it's harder to control your temperature in the styrofoam ones you can do it and you can get a good hatch but we need to have at least an 80 percent hatch rate we do get that with with these incubators right here now for smaller quantities, the styrofoams work good, especially if you have the time to watch them every day and make sure that everything is, is tweaked just right and the process is working the way you want it to work. With these, we can put the eggs in and we only need to check them every so many days. So I'm going to go ahead and get the eggs out of here and show you what we got going on. And we'll line the, uh, the hatcher box. And we'll put it back in here and then we'll come back in a few days when they start hatching out and we'll show you the, the little dudes hatching out, okay? Alright, what I've done is I've taken my hatcher box and I've lined it with a pad here. I'm going to show you what we use. We use these pads right here and these are pads that you would line a dog or a cat box with or something like that and uh, or uh, maybe a baby's crib you know you put down between the sheet and the mattress and they're a, 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 a cotton liner with a plastic back and I turn them over and put them on there and there's two reasons I do that uh, GQF sends you a cardboard piece that's pre-cut that goes in your box but if you don't happen to have them uh, and they, you know, they can be costly. 
uh, what you want to do is you want to use these so that the chicks have a good footing on the uh, hatcher box when they're hatching out. You don't want them sliding around because the little legs are really fragile and they can break them. So this will give them a, a surface to grab onto the bottom of the box with. So you just want to make sure you line that with something that will will let them little feet grab that so they won't be sliding and, and slipping around. And another reason that this is absorbent so it, it helps to uh, when they do hatch out it helps them to uh, so they're not running around in, in whatever liquid might be getting into the tray. So we'll get the eggs in here and we'll put it back inside the incubator. I want to take a minute we've got all of our eggs in our tray here. Uh, I put about I think it was 52 eggs I put in there and there's a little trick you can use when you're taking your eggs off your hatching tray and putting them on um, when you're taking them off your uh, your egg turner and putting them on your hatching tray that'll help you find out you know if you've got a uh, actual egg that's got a chick in it and I've showed you this in the past is when you take your eggs out one way you can tell is that one egg might be a little lighter than the other egg. You can tell the difference right off when you pick them up. And if you can't really tell that an egg is lighter, one egg is lighter than the other, one thing you can do is put them on a flat surface. And when you let that egg go, you see how that egg kind of bounces up like that? That there is not a fertile egg. It's not a viable egg, okay? The yolk is all at one end. The egg is very light and you know that egg's not going to hatch so you want to throw that egg aside a good egg when you put it down it might just you you let it go it's just going to bounce a little bit and it's going to pretty much stay put wherever you have it where this one right here is you know it's going to bounce and wobble around okay and, and i'm not i'm just i'm just taking my hand off from that so that's another way you can tell whether you have a good viable egg that's going to hatch and that possibly will have a chick in it let's get this egg back in here. Alright, and I'm going to go ahead now and open my door real quick, real quick, and slide my tray into the bottom of the incubator. And we'll wait for these to hatch. And about the time that these eggs here hatch out, my other tray will be ready. So we'll place that in there. Make sure that our water and our hatching tray is up good so that the, I mean our um, humidifier tray making sure that the water levels in there good because you want to keep the humidity right now at this point somewhere in the 60 percent range. Um, I like around 62 to 67 percent somewhere in there. Your temperature wants to still remain at 99.9 .9 degrees at this point. So these eggs are going to be in here uh, for probably another couple of days and then we'll come back and hopefully we'll be able to show you the hatching process again. Now we've gone over this before in some other videos that we've done but the problem is you know a lot of times you don't mention something that you should have mentioned or you forgot to and some people may not see the other video and they might see this one so that's why we go over this several times uh, through different videos because there's always something new even though we've been doing this for, for 10, 15 years, somewhere in there, there's always something new we're learning through the hatching process. So, um, a couple of days we'll come back, we'll show you these guys hatching out, and then we'll go ahead and we'll put them in our brooder, brooder uh, pen that we have for them, let them stay in there for a couple of weeks, then they'll go out in the pen. So, hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you back in a couple of days.